let's talk about some ventilator modes. We have a 980 Puritan Bennett set up over there. We're gonna do some touch and turn, do some hands on, some close ups on it. Hopefully it'll be helpful. We'll talk about these following modes, assist control, volume controls, the first one we'll go over. Kind of one of our basic modes that we put a lot of patients on, very versatile. Uh, we use tidal volume and rate, and we do a peak, and I'll show you a couple things on there and how we manipulate the I to E ratio and stuff like that. And we're gonna go over volume control plus, which is kind of a smart version of assist control, where it takes an average of the breaths and it delivers this volume at this lowest possible pressure, okay, pretty slick. I also go over pressure control, which is a, which is a mode where we don't set a tidal volume, we set a, a pressure limit, and then make this tidal volume inside this pressure limit and helps pop open the lungs, okay. Also, pressure support is the, is the mode that we use for weaning, and you're probably familiar with this with your patients who are on SATs, SBTs in the morning, and we wanna liberate them from the vent. It's kind of a mode that we just give them minimal support, and they do most of the breathing on their own. We're also gonna go over SINV, synchronized intermittent mechanical ventilation, which combines assist control and pressure support, kind of the best of both worlds, where we have a rate and we have a weaning component to it. We're also gonna go over APRV, bi-level, uh, which is a very sophisticated mode we use to help pop open alveoli, and we'll go all over those right now. So here's our ventilator. We have it set at assist control, and we'll go over the basics. Rate of 14, F is fre frequency, a tidal volume 500 mLs. Now we have our flow set at 60, we have our FIO2 at 30, PEEP at five, okay? Uh, for the flow, you'll notice if I turn up the flow, it'll manipulate the I to E ratio, the inspiratory to expiratory ratio. Okay, the higher the flow, the faster the patient gets the breaths. It gives them a quicker breath and we give a longer exhalation point. Okay. And I want you to also notice the peep. Okay, so we have a peep. Let's look at our waveform. You'll see that there's a zero, which is the zero baseline. We see that we never return to baseline because we have five of PEEP dialed in. The little space there keeps extra air into the lungs. And if we turn it up, 10 of PEEP, you'll see that the baseline starts higher. The next couple breaths, bam, there you go. So we have a PEEP of 10. And that's how we're, that's how the peep looks on our waveform. Now we're not taking any spontaneous breaths. As you can see, we have a test lung. It's not doing any breathing, but let's start doing some breathing. And you'll see our rate climb. And you'll see, notice that this letter up here has changed from C to A, okay? So A means assisted breath, okay? And if we stop breathing, if we stop over breathing, you'll see that it turns back to C, which is a, means controlled breath. Okay, so let's talk about uh, volume control plus or PRVC, whatever the machine you're using. So let's say we're already on uh, assist control. So we're gonna switch over to volume control plus, okay? Then we're going to set the same tidal volume. And remember, this is the mode that adjusts. It's a kind of a smart version of volume control. It will adjust your flow based on the lung compliance, okay? So let's, get, let's go ahead and get this started. And you'll notice the first couple of breaths are gonna feel goofy and dyssynchronous, okay? Because what it's doing is it's determining the breath, it's feeling it out, it's feeling out our patient, the lung compliance of this test lung, and it's going to get an average, and then that's, it's going to determine how quickly to do the, to send, to give the breath, the flow, okay? So, now it's starting to level out, okay? We have a peak pressure is 25, and we're getting a tidal volume, okay? how, and it's adjusting how quickly based on the compliance to give this breath. Now, if I put some resistance on this lung, it's going to adjust it. So it's trying to keep the peak pressures the same by manipulating 
the IDE ratio, very slick. So we're see, staying in the same ballpark for peak pressures, even though I'm putting a lot of resistance on this lung. So that's volume control plus. All right, let's talk about pressure control. Uh, this is a pretty good mode, pretty slick. It's not used a lot, I wish it was used more, but let's talk about it. So volume control, assist control, we're setting a, a tidal volume and we're driving it off a breath. For pressure control, we're going to set a pressure limit. Okay? So let's say that we have a patient who has uh, very tight lungs and we want to limit the pressure in their lungs. We can manipulate that by setting a high pressure We'll set a baseline. Okay. And based on these limits, these parameters, we'll set a rate, of course. Based on these parameters, it will give us our tidal volume. And it'll give us our rate, okay, based on the tidal volume, but it's gonna cap our pressures 29 or whatever we set it to. Okay. So if we have a, a patient who has very tight compliant lungs, we want to keep the pressures low. We'll cap the pressure, the peak pressure, and we'll see how, with how they do with, with tidal volumes. Now, this is a great mode. Uh, it's very good for oxygenation, okay? Because there's things that we could do, like manipulate the eye time. If we give them a longer eye time, we could give them more of an inhalation and make the lungs into kind of a box. And so we're kind of holding their breath more and we're popping open alveoli. See that? So we're giving them a big inhale. Big inhale. And then we're giving and we're making them breathe in a box. Pretty slick. Uh, and this this mode should be used more, but there's a lot of tending to it. Okay, because what happens if you're a patient uh, starts to get, the lungs start to get better, they start to get uh, more compliant, the tidal volumes will get way bigger and then you'll have to adjust the, the pressure. Okay, you'll have to adjust, uh, bring down the peak. And so you could let's make the tidal volume smaller. Otherwise you'll have these 700 tidal volumes and you're not paying attention. But it's a very okay, good mode. So let's talk about pressure support ventilation. This is our mode that we're gonna use for weaning. We have our patient who, uh, we're trying to get them off the ventilator. We got the SAT going. Got them awake, okay, they have a good gag and cough, they have a good cuff leak, all these things check out. We want to try to wean them off the ventilator. So we're going to put them on minimal settings and see how they do. So what we do is we're going to switch over to spontaneous and we're going to give them pressure support. Okay, depending on your protocol, ours is 5 over 5. Okay, and we'll give them 5 over 5. 5 of pressure support, 5 of PEEP. Okay, so they're kind of just breathing on their own. And you'll notice there's no breathing going on, right? Because our test lung is not taking any breaths. So it's hanging out, not taking that little movement triggered a breath, but what's gonna happen is this machine, it's not gonna give them any support unless they nudge it to happen. They're gonna give it, they're gonna make some effort and we're going to get some, the pressure support is going to kick in. Now, if nothing happens, we're going to get an apnea alarm. There you go. It's gonna say, hey, look, patient's not breathing. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna turn, do you wanna give them a rate? Or do you want to try to wake them up? We go, no, let's nudge them. Let's try to wake them up. Okay, so we go, hey, man, we're trying to get you out the vent. You help us out. So we get sternal rub, okay, do whatever we have to do. And then they start breathing, okay? And hopefully they breathe in slower than this, right? But we get them breathing, and we want to sustain this for at least 30 minutes or 60 minutes, depending on your protocol, okay? And then we, don't, we check out their work of breathing, we check out their heart rate, see if they don't, you know, if they don't have too many issues. And then we could look at their rapid shell of breathing index, one of the one of the tools we use for weaning. Now it's here. Okay, if it stays under 105 for 30 to 60 minutes, depending on your protocol, of course, and then we have a pretty good idea that they're ready for extubation. Okay, so that's our pressure support. Okay, it's all driven by the patient. Okay, let's talk about SIMV. Synchronized intermittent mechanical ventilation. Now this is two modes in one. This is assist control, and it's also pressure support that we just talked about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to SIMV here, and then we're going to dial in the pressure support, okay? Let's go five over five. 
And let's give a lower rate. Let's go 10. Okay, so we have a mandatory rate of 10. We're tidal volume dialed in. Okay, so we're going to give them 10 breaths. And if the patient only breathes 10 times, we're going to do tidal volume of 500. But if they want to do other breaths on their own, they're going to vary based on the pressure support. Okay, so synchronize and assist. Okay, you'll see different letters. This is the machine. Okay, this is S. Okay, and you'll notice the tidal volume varies based on the pressure support, so that they can have small tidal volumes, larger tidal volumes, but they're, the, all the breathing that they're doing over 10 is going to be at a pressure support level. Okay? And this is a mixed mode, and we use this for weaning or for a patient who's more awake, okay, depending on uh, how you want to use it, but it's another, it's another tool in our toolbox. Okay, let's talk about APRV, Airway Pressure Release Ventilation also known as bi-level. On this vent, you'll see that it's called bi-level, okay? Uh, and this, patient, this is a mode for patients who have problems oxygenating. We're gonna pop open the alveoli, give them uh, more of an extreme uh, way to ventilate them. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we switch over to bi-level and we see these goofy vent settings. What are these? I don't even recognize them. Where's our tidal volume, right? This doesn't look familiar to me. Uh, so there's a couple things about uh, bi-level to know. This mode is a time constant mode. So we give this patient a duration of time to breathe at a certain level, and then we give them another duration at another level. So we're not just pumping in uh, 500 mils of tidal volume. We're giving them a constant, a time constant to breathe against. And this will pop up in the al alveoli. Uh, and it's very effective if used properly. Okay? So let's say that we have our bi-level uh, we have our patient, we're going to put them on bi-level. Where do we start, right? For a tidal volume, for assist control, we start at a tidal volume. For APRV, bi-level patient, bi-vent patient, we need to start at the PEEP high, okay? And how do we get that PEEP high? We want a plateau pressure. Now, the plateau pressure is the average of the pressures in the lungs, okay? So now, this peak, that's not the peak pressure, that's the highest point. So the peak, the plateau pressure of this Test lung, we need to find that, and how do we do that? This vent is actually pretty slick, it'll do it for you. Well, we do an inspiratory pause, and it'll give us our plateau pressure, which is 23 centimeters of water. Back in the day, we actually had to wait for the high peak pressure and press the pause button and measure it that way, but this is pretty slick, it'll do it for you. So we have our starting point. So our high peak, our high peak will now be 23 centimeters of water. Okay, so we're gonna go to by level, okay, we'll set our peep high to 23, okay. Our peep low will be given to our doc, from our doctor. Uh, zero to under five is usually where we have our peep low because it's not, it's, because we already fill in the lungs with this inverse ratio. We don't want to, we don't want to, kind of want to give them a place to dump the CO2. So we have a peep low of zero and all that, this will make sense when I point it out to you in the, into the, the graph. So, and then we have a time low, and this is the, the duration for exhalation. And you're either, you'll either be given a time low or a time high by your doctor, and this is how we'll set it. So we'll, time low, say a typical time low, will be under a second. Oh, it's, this is, warns you, are you sure you wanna do this? Yes, I wanna do this. We're gonna go even lower. Yes, I want to go low, lower than that. Whoa, are you sure? Yes, I do. This is a pretty sick patient. So we're gonna go, we'll talk, we'll stop at 0.6. Okay, so this, the doctor gave, yeah, I gave a time low of 0.6, peep high at 23, peep low of five, or a peep low of zero, I'm sorry, and then I guess a rate of 14. Okay. And we'll accept all, and this gives us our time constant. So this is what the breathing looks like on APRV bivent. Okay, so we have this. You notice we set it at zero zero peep, but it never goes back to baseline. There's always a little bit of air left in, okay? Because this is an open lung approach, as we call it. This is all inspiratory. If you notice the IDE ratio, it's 5.5 to 1, which means we're inhaling 5.5 and we're exhaling 1, and this pops open the alveoli, okay? Now, this seems like it's not very comfortable, yeah? 
when it's not, or mechanical ventilation isn't very comfortable, but this, is very, this, this has been working. Um, and so what happens is if our patient is breathing, when they take spontaneous breaths, they're going to happen above this peep of 23, this high peep of 23. So watch, if we start doing breaths, they happen above high peep. And that's where the alveoli gets popped open. See that? And that's why this is so effective. Now, if our patient is completely paralyzed, sometimes we get a sick patient and we go, oh, let's paralyze them in our APRV. We're not really doing that. Okay, that's where the magic happens. That's where the alveoli gets popped open. But right now, we're just making them breathe funny if they're paralyzed. Okay? It will make them breathe. It is, a, it is considered a spontaneous mode, but it'll nudge them to breathe in this weird time, time constant. Okay? But, like I said, we're not really doing much unless this is happening above high peep. Okay? So very good mode. Uh, something we should use properly and commit to it and not give up on it too quickly, okay? All right, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I get this question a bit. What's your favorite mode? What's the best mode? What fixes everyone? And the answer is there is no better mode. They're all kind of good. Uh, just depends on what the patient needs and the situation. It's just best to know all the tools in your toolbox.